Based on this review, many of you are gonna wanna buy the Huawei Band 8, and there are definitely some good reasons to do that. However, I will also show you that the Band 8 has a number of limitations, so make sure that these are not deal breakers for you before pulling the trigger. Now, as always, I will present systematic analyses of the raw data collected with the Huawei Band 8, so you can objectively evaluate if the Huawei Band 8 meets your needs. Let's get started. This has actually been the single most requested review over the last months and it's been a challenge to get it out. However, I finally managed to get my hands on two Huawei Band 8s and I've been testing them for about three weeks now. And after all this testing, the Huawei Band 8 appears to be the best performer in its price class, at least in certain areas, likely making it a very attractive option for many of you. Now, optically, the Huawei Band 8 looks similar to the Huawei Band 7 and Band 6 with some slight modifications. And the major changes are in the performance when it comes to heart rate and sleep stage tracking. At least that's what Huawei claims because the Huawei Band 8 launches with a new generation of the heart rate tracking algorithm and a new generation of the sleep state tracking algorithm compared to the older Band 7. So this will be my focus in this review and I'll systematically test the Huawei Band 8. Now as you know I generally don't list the specs of watches so you can find those on the manufacturer's website but I did want to note two things. First of all, I was impressed with the fast charging of the Band 8, which is supposed to charge the capacity in about 45 minutes. Now, I didn't time it, but it seems to be about right compared to my experience. And seconds in the advertisements I saw online, I somehow got the feeling that the screen was a bit bigger than it appears in reality. Maybe this is just me, but I found it important to share that impression. Now, without further ado, let's get to the testing. And I want to start by testing the heart rate tracking accuracy of the Band 8. Now to test that, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the Band 8 against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. And we'll start by looking at one of the easiest exercises for a watch to track, cycling indoors. And I'll be looking at a total of six interval spinning sessions. Now this involves very little movement or tension on my arms and will therefore produce less noise. And here we can see an overview of that accuracy over all of the rides. Now each dot here is a single heart rate measurement with along the horizontal axis the value according to the polar h10 ecg chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the huawei band 8. now the closer the points are to this blue line right here the better the agreement and the darker black the color the more dots that there are now overall the agreement with the ecg chest strap is actually very good since almost all points are on or at least very close to the blue line there are a few points above it right here but this generally still looks very good we can also see that the correlation this r value up here is very high at 0.98 this value cannot be higher than one so a value of 0.98 is quite good however we do need to take a look at some of the individual training sessions to see if we can explain why some of the heart rate measurements are a bit higher than expected here you can see the first example interval spinning session where we see a very good agreement between the Huawei Band 8 and the ECG chest strap. Now along the horizontal axis we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue-green I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red is my heart rate according to the Huawei Band 8. And for this ride you can almost not see the red line at all, meaning that the overlap is almost perfect with the ECG chest strap. I cannot see any really significant differences between the reference and the Band 8. And we see more or less the same thing for this second ride. In this case, there was one moment where the Band 8 briefly detected a too high heart rate. This was a moment where I was taking a brief pause, but this is negligible in my opinion. And we see more or less the same thing for this third example I wanted to share with you. Though in this case, there were a few small delays in the Band 8 detecting a decrease in my heart rate. You can see that right here, but also right here, right here, and right here. Now these are really minor issues, and you can also see right here, it didn't detect a full dip in my heart rate. But overall, it's doing quite well. But you're probably wondering how this compares to the other smartwatches and health trackers, both cheap ones and more expensive ones. Well, let's take a look. That overview is displayed right here, and the correlation value I was talking about before is the metric I'll use for this, which is displayed along the horizontal axis right here. We want that value to be as close to 1 as possible. And on the vertical axis, I ordered the watches from worst to best. So the further to the right and the higher the device is, the better this correlation with the reference device. And here I marked the two Huawei Band 8s I tested in red. Now I should note that for some reason the data export for my second Huawei Band consists of fewer rides than for the first, so that data will be a bit less reliable. However, as you can see, both are amongst the better watches out there, but let's zoom in a bit so we can actually read the labels. So here I zoomed in to just the watches with a correlation of 0.9 or higher, and the main Huawei Band is the one with underscore 1 right here, and the second one is called underscore 2. 
And you can see the Huawei Band 8, which had the most data, this one right here, isn't that far off from the best performing watches out there. It's not as good as some of the Apple watches, for instance, and some selected more expensive Huawei watches, but still, it's almost as good as, for instance, the Galaxy Watch, the Huawei Watch Fit 2, and the Google Pixel Watch. So it's not doing that poorly. And that's quite impressive since all of these are of course much more expensive than the Huawei Band 8. It even seems to be doing a bit better than the new Garmin Fenix 7 Pro and Garmin Epix 2 Pro, though I would want to do more testing before drawing a definitive conclusion. Overall though, for the price, this is looking very attractive. It's also doing better than the Huawei Band 7 down here, so Huawei does seem to have made substantial improvements over the last year. However, let's now take a look at a more difficult exercise for a watch to track, cycling outside. Now cycling outside increases the tension on my arms because I have to hold onto the handlebars and there's also much more movement and bumpiness, making it much harder for a watch to get a clean heart rate signal. Now I tested the Huawei Band 8 for a total of 10 bike rides. By the way, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now let's take a look at the analysis for cycling outside since this is quite interesting. And an overview of that is displayed right here. Now, as you can see, the performance of the Huawei Band 8 dropped a bit for cycling outside compared to cycling indoors. But luckily, most points are still along the blue line or at least close to it. But we do see some points away from it. There's a few above it right here, but this isn't that bad. But the ones that are furthest away are below it, meaning that the Huawei Watch 8 detected a too low heart rate in these moments. The correlation is still quite good though, at a value of 0.86. But we need to look at the individual rides to actually see what's going on. Here we have the first example bike ride with again the reference in blue green and the Huawei Band 8 in red. And as you can see the Band 8 generally followed along quite well with the ECG reference but there were two moments where it deviated significantly. You can see one moment here where it detected a too low heart rate so it wasn't able to pick up on the peak in my heart rate. And you can also see right here that it had a delay in picking up the decrease in my heart rate so there it detected a too high heart rate. Still compared to most devices out there this is actually looking quite good and we see more or less the same thing for this second example bike ride though in this case there were a few moments where I detected a too low heart rate. You can see that right here for instance but also right here and right here and there were also some moments where it had a delay in picking up a decrease in my heart rate. You can see that right here for instance but also right here and right here. Now these kind of moments where I detected too low heart rate were probably the reason we saw some points below the blue line in the overview plot. And this is more or less what we see for all rides. The agreement is generally quite good, though there are some moments where it's not able to pick up on the full peak in my heart rate. You can see that for instance right here, right here and also right here. Still, compared to most devices out there, this isn't looking that bad. You can also see that in this overview plot right here, where again the more to the top right, the better the performance of the watch is. And here I marked the two Huawei Band 8s in red, and as you can see the Band 8 is amongst the best devices out there, doing better than some much more expensive watches. But again we need to zoom in a bit because we cannot really read this that well. So here I just took the watches with a correlation of 0.7 or higher, and as you can see my two Huawei Band 8s are performing about as well as the Huawei Watch GT Runner and are also not that far off from the much more expensive Huawei Watch GT3 Pro. And keep in mind, I already excluded so many watches with a correlation below 0.7, so it's doing better than much more expensive watches from for instance Garmin and Samsung. It also seems to be a significant improvement over the previous generation, the Huawei Band 7, which was already quite good honestly. Next, let's take a look at another difficult exercise for a watch to track weightlifting. Now for weightlifting is not the movement that makes it hard for a watch to track your heart rate, but for this exercise it's much more difficult because of the increased tension on my arm and on my wrist, making it much harder for a watch to get a clean heart rate signal. However, first a quick side note, if you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. Of course, you would also make me really happy and it would help my efforts if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. But of course, this is totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion, let's take a look at the performance during weightlifting, which I tested during a total of four training sessions. And here we can see an overview of that performance. And this looks better than I expected, honestly. I was afraid that as for this difficult exercise, the Band 8 would really struggle, but the correlation is similar to what we saw for cycling outside and is now at 0.86, so that's quite good. However, what is important to check is to see how many peaks in my heart rate it's actually able to pick up on during my training sessions. Since picking up on those peaks during a set is where most watches struggle. 
that is displayed right here for the first training session. And as you can see, the Band 8 was able to pick up on most of my peaks in my heart rate, at least to some degree. So that looks very good compared to the competition out there. It's not perfect, so it misses some of the peaks. You can see that, for instance, right here, but also right here. Still, overall, most of the peaks in my heart rate were indeed detected. Most watches actually miss most of the peaks almost completely. Now, this second session actually looks a bit worse, where in the beginning it missed some of the peaks. Still, later in the session, it was able to pick up on all the peaks in my heart rate again. So I'm not sure why it struggled a bit more. Probably it had to do with the type of exercise I was doing. Still, overall, it doesn't look that bad. And if you look at this third example training session, it was again able to pick up on most of the peaks in my heart rate again. So I suspect that for one or two types of exercises, the Band 8 struggled to detect my heart rate while I was weightlifting, maybe because the tension on my arms was especially high during those exercises. However, in most cases, it is able to track my heart rate during weightlifting lifting even when I'm training my upper body so that's quite good compared to other watches out there and we can see how good it actually is if you compare it to all of the other watches out there and those results are displayed right here. I again marked both of my Huawei Band 8s in red but I should note that for the second Band 8 right here I only had one training session of data so I wouldn't pay too much attention to this one. Still we generally see that both of them are doing quite well but let's zoom in a bit to see that more clearly. Here we just have the watches with a correlation of 0.7 or higher and as you can see the Band 8 does about as well as the Huawei Band 6, 7 and 4. It's not quite as good as some of the more expensive Huawei watches like the Huawei Watch GT Runner, Huawei Watch Fit 2 and Huawei Watch GT3 Pro. But still overall for the price the Band 8 is not underperforming and it's likely better than some more expensive watches like for instance the Galaxy Watch 5 and the Garmin Fenix 7 Pro. We just looked at a lot of data, but to summarize, I'm not disappointed and actually impressed with the heart rate tracking performance of the Huawei Band 8 during different exercises. It showed some relatively minor issues during cycling outside and during weightlifting, but overall it's actually amongst the top performance in each of these categories. Therefore, overall, I would give the heart rate tracking performance of the Huawei Band 8 4 out of 5 stars. And if we take into account the low price tag of the Band 8, I might even add a quarter or half a star to that performance. I honestly cannot think of any other device out there at the moment that at least for this price tag performs as well. You might be able to find a cheap Huawei Watch Fit 2 which would potentially even do slightly better but you need to be lucky to find a good deal on that. So this is looking good so far for the Huawei Band 8. However, one feature that Huawei has always struggled with is the sleep stage tracking. So let's see if the new True Sleep 3.0 algorithm solves this problem. To check if the Huawei Band 8 can detect my sleep stages, I'll compare it to an EEG device called the Dream 2 that can actually measure my brain waves and has been shown to be relatively reliable at sleep stage tracking. And here I show an overview of the sleep test results. For getting an overall impression of how well the Huawei Band 8 performs, the Dream 2 should likely be good enough. However, the gold standard would be polysomnography, which I would also like to try on the Huawei Band 8 in the future. Now on top here are the sleep stages as recorded by the EEG device. And on the left are the sleep stages as recorded by the Huawei Band 8. I wore both the EEG device and the Band 8 to bed for 5 nights and I'll see how close the predictions of the Band 8 are to those of the EEG device. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 was predicted as each sleep stage by the Band 8. And if they perfectly agree, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. First of all, we see that only about 48% of what the EEG device detected as being deep sleep was also detected as being deep sleep by the Huawei Band 8. Now, comparing it to other devices, that's honestly not very good. Combined, it predicted more of what the EEG device detected as being deep sleep as light sleep and REM sleep instead. Now, looking at the individual nights will help us understand it even better, and here we see the first night I wanted to share with you. On top we have the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 EEG headband, with along the horizontal axis the time and my sleep stages on the vertical axis. And on the bottom we have a similar plot but now for the Huawei Band 8. And in purple I highlighted the deep sleep as recorded by the EEG device. And as you can see the agreement is pretty bad. Only about half of what the EEG device detected as deep sleep was also detected as deep sleep by the Band 8. But in addition, the Band 8 detected a lot of extra deep sleep. For a normal night of sleep, you may expect about 20% of your night to be deep sleep. And most of this will be early in the night. And as you can see, the Huawei Band 8 actually detected a lot of deep sleep. And most of this was later in the night. So this is not very realistic. And that's also true for this last night I wanted to share with you and basically for all nights that I tested it. We actually see that a lot of what the EEG device detected as being deep sleep was instead detected as either REM sleep or light sleep by the Huawei Band 8.
Light sleep agreement is actually very bad. Only about a third of what the EEG device detected as being light sleep was also detected as light sleep by the Huawei Band 8. About the same amount was actually detected by the Band 8 as being deep sleep instead, so that's not very good. And also about one fourth was detected as being REM sleep, so again not very good and I'm not happy with this performance. If we look at just the percentages, the RAM sleep performance doesn't seem the worst at about 55%, so this is already quite bad still. And a lot of what was RAM sleep according to the EEG device was actually predicted as being light sleep by the Band 8 instead. And as you might have noticed, the Band 8 actually tends to detect too much RAM sleep overall, as you can see based on these percentages for the deep sleep and light sleep column. And we can see that even better if we look at some of the individual nights right here. Now here I mark the REM sleep as detected by the EEG device in red. And as you can see the overlap is pretty poor, especially here in the beginning of the night. It detected a bunch of extra REM sleep compared to the reference device here. And it also missed this segment that the EEG device detected. Also the overall patterns here are just not very realistic. And I would say that this second example looks even worse. During the first third of the night, the Band 8 detected almost no REM sleep, and then for the second two thirds of the night, it detected almost all REM sleep. This just isn't a very realistic pattern of REM sleep. And this also makes it very unlikely you can see my sleep cycles based on just the data from the Huawei Band 8. Now you go through roughly four to six sleep cycles each night, each one starting with light sleep and deep sleep marked here in blue, and each one ending in REM sleep marked here in red. And as you can see, I likely had one, two, three, four complete sleep cycles this night. And I would say that based on just the data from the Huawei Band 8, I wouldn't be able to see any of them. Finally, awake detection seems okay if we're just looking at the percentages with about 88% of the awake time agreeing between the Huawei Band 8 and the EEG device. However, this is honestly a bit difficult to judge since for most nights I tested the Huawei Band 8, I had almost no awake moments. But this relatively large percentage is actually largely based on correctly detecting when I fell asleep and when I woke up, and not really on the short awake moments I did have. You can see that for instance in this night right here, where the EEG device detected two short awake moments marked here in green, and these were not detected by the band 8. But the band did correctly detect when I fell asleep and when I woke up, and this is what that large percentage is based on. And for this second example night, you can see it did correctly detect when I fell asleep, but it was a bit confused here at the end where it said I woke up earlier than I actually did. And in reality, I likely only had a few awake moments before I actually woke up. This was honestly kind of disappointing. The Huawei Band 8 just doesn't seem to be very good at sleep stage tracking. But to give you a better impression of how it compares to other devices out there, let's compare it to many of the other watches and sleep stage trackers I've tested in the past. This graph shows you an overview of the agreement of different watches with the EEG device. Along the horizontal axis we have the average agreement over the four individual sleep stages, and on the vertical axis we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. Now the better the agreement the more to the top right the device is. The watches marked in blue were actually tested against a polysomnography device which is the gold standard in sleep stage tracking and the results not marked in blue were tested with my EEG device. Now the results based on the EEG device and those of the PSG device actually give very similar results. And as you can see, the devices with the best agreement so far were different Apple Watches. In this case, the Apple Watch Series 7, Series 8, Apple Watch SE, and Apple Watch Ultra. The HSleep Pod 3 actually also performed very well, and other good devices include different Fitbits, Whoop straps, and a Withing Sleep Analyzer. The agreement is not quite as good as that of Apple Watches. If we now plot the Huawei Band 8 in the same plot, which is marked here in red, we see it's not the absolute worst device, which would be the Mi Band 8 in this case. However, it's also not amongst the best devices out there. It's actually among the devices that are doing quite poorly. It's very close to other Huawei devices I tested in the past, like for instance the Huawei Watch GT3 and GT3 Pro, but other watches that performed similarly in my testing include for instance the Galaxy Watch 4 and 5, but also some Garmin devices that are not doing any better than the Huawei Band 8. I actually wore my second Huawei Band 8 for several nights as well, and if you plot this in the same plot, we see this shows similar poor performance. It's really in the middle of all the other Huawei watches I tested previously, and the difference in performance between the two Huawei Band 8s is likely some random variation, but both are not performing that good. Overall, this makes me think that the new TrueSleep 3.0 algorithm hasn't changed much compared to the older versions. All of the Huawei watches and bands I've tested over the last years appear to perform more or less the same and all are pretty bad. But one more way to confirm this is by checking how similar the sleep stages tracked by my two different bands were. So if the two track very different sleep stages for the same night, it's very likely that the sleep stage tracking is no good since at least one of the two must have performed poorly. And those results are displayed right here. Now on top are the sleep stages as tracked by my first Huawei Band 8 and on the vertical axis are those of the second Huawei Band 8. And I again normalized each column to 100%. 
First of all, we see that comparing the two watches, only about 52% of what the first watch detected as deep sleep was also detected as deep sleep by the second watch, so that's not very good. And we see the same thing for light sleep, there's only a 50% agreement in terms of light sleep, so that's not good. And REM sleep is even worse, where only about 42% of what was REM sleep according to one watch was also detected as REM sleep by the other watch. Now awake time is again very tricky to judge since both watches detected almost no awake time, but the awake time that was detected by this watch did not agree at all with the other watch, and 100% of the awake moments detected by my first Huawei Band 8 was detected as light sleep instead by the other Band 8, but again this is difficult to judge since both detected so few awake moments. Well, for me, this confirms that the sleep stage tracking is just bad. I wouldn't rely on the sleep stages the band 8 reports, except perhaps the total time spent in bed. I would therefore give the sleep stage tracking just 2 out of 5 stars. So that leaves us in a bit of a pickle. The heart rate tracking is really good, but the sleep stage tracking is really bad. So should you buy it? Well, that depends on your focus, I guess. If you're mostly interested in tracking your workouts and your heart rate is responding to them, then yes, this is a cheap and convenient way of tracking your heart rate. However, keep in mind that the sleep stage tracking is likely just very bad, so in the end it's really up to you. This also makes it difficult for me to give an overall mark to the Huawei Band 8. I am really impressed with the heart rate tracking and I expect that many of you will end up getting a Band 8 because heart rate tracking is likely the most important feature for many of my viewers. Still, when it comes to the overall package, it's just not complete as the sleep stage tracking is just bad. Considering all of this, overall I'd give the Huawei Band 8 Three and a half out of five stars. And there's a few other important factors you might want to consider before getting this device. First of all, Huawei has been facing restrictions in America, meaning they don't have access to Google services and you might need to install their own app store to get full functionality, which is a bit inconvenient. This also means it might be more tricky to get your hands on a Band 8 in the States. And it's also important to mention that my testing has its limitations. I tested the Band 8 just on me and it might perform differently on you, for instance, if you have a different skin color. In addition, I also only received a data export for a limited number of days from Huawei and also future firmware updates might still change the results. Still, I can generally recommend the Huawei Band 8 if you want good heart rate tracking on a budget. Now, if you do decide to get a Huawei Band 8, an Aura Ring, a Whoop Strap, another device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, and at the same time you want to support the channel, there are different affiliate and non-affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra, and some even provide a discount. Given that you watched this whole video on the Huawei Band 8, you'll also be interested in this video right here where I review the Mi Band 8, which many people are considering instead of the Huawei Band 8. Now, if you find this video useful, it would be great if you like, subscribe and comment, but this is totally up to you. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.